I read this story. It was about this nine-year-old boy by the name of Bo Eason. And um, he drew this little stick figure, and they still have it today. And they said it was an unimpressive drawing, but what was impressive was the caption. And it was a little stick figure of a boy holding a football. And it said, best safety in NFL. And it was a giant goal. It was a giant dream. And he wrote it at nine years old. And they said it was a, a giant-sized dream or a Goliath-sized dream because when his time came to play football, when he went to high school, he went to tryouts for the football team. And when he came home, he was devastated because he came up short, literally. They took the measurements, and he was five foot even, 100 pounds. But yet he wanted to be the best safety in NFL. And he came home, and he, and he was down, and he was frustrated, and his dad came home, and he was like, what's wrong with you, Bo? Like, what's wrong, son? And he's like, I, he was like, I didn't make the team. And he said, well, why not? And he said, I didn't measure up. They took my measurements. They, they, they weighed me, and I didn't weigh enough. And they measured me, and I wasn't tall enough. They took my measurements, and I didn't measure up. And without skipping a beat, his dad said, but did they measure your heart? It was one word to a high school boy that could change his identity on the way that he saw himself and the course and the trajectory of his life. Yeah, the, yeah, maybe they did measure you. And how many people know that the world will try to measure you? And you'll never come up by the world standards, but did they measure your heart? Did they measure what God put inside of you? Did they measure the Holy Spirit that you have? Did they measure the anointing that God put in your life? Don't measure me by my past because if you do, I would never be up here. And he says, son, did they measure your heart? And he gives him this story about a rancher, a rancher's dog. And he said, you know what, son? Because he was a, a ranch hand growing up, Bo's dad. And he said, you know what, son? I'm going to tell you a story about a ranch dog. He goes, the most important thing to a rancher is his dog. A ranch dog can do the job of 10 men herding cattle and getting the animals from one place to the other. And he said, whenever a rancher, when a ranch dog has puppies, Whenever all the litter is laying out, they get a, a piece of string of yarn and they tie, they find the smallest puppy, the runt of the litter, and they put the piece of yarn and they tie it around the puppy's neck to identify the runt of the litter. Bo was like, okay, but why do they do that, dad? He said, because the youngest puppy just to survive is going to have to outwork, outfight, outthink, outsmart all the other siblings just to survive, just to get food, just to get milk, just to get water. It's going to have to work that much harder. And once they find the runt of the litter, that's the one that they want to work for them. Because when this dog is full grown, it can outwork, outsmart, outthink all the other dogs combined. Hey, son, son, that's you. Because Bo had six other siblings. And it was that day that Bo said, you know what, before I ever sign a contract in the NFL, I'm going to sign a contract with myself that I'm going to be the first one on the football field, the last one to leave. I'm going to work the most. I'm going to work the hardest. Nobody's going to outwork me. I'm going to do more. Whatever they do, I'm going to do more. Day in and day out, Bo Eason did just that. And in 1984, in the NFL draft, they drafted him to be safety in the NFL. But he said, so, so take it back as he was giving this interview. He said, where, where did it all, all start? and Where did it all begin for you to be one of the best safeties in NFL? He said, it was one word from my dad. It was one word from my dad. How many dads do we have in this place right now? Make some noise real quick. Make some noise real quick. Men, it's time that we take our seat of authority once again. And make sure the words that are coming out of our mouth are building, are edifying, are uplifting. We speak life into our children. Because the enemy loves it when the man of God leaves. And, the man of, and maybe you have, and maybe the, the, the marriage isn't perfect, the circumstances aren't perfect, but you can take your seat of authority in the house of your family. And, and the situation not, may not be perfect. But you serve a perfect God, and that you're going to give the word that God gives you to raise up a next generation. Because how many people know that the enemy loves it whenever the authority is outside of the house? And it was one word that changed Bo's life. And I believe one word can change your life. The world measured you, and you didn't meet up to the world's standards. That's why you never fit in. 
The world told you you would never make it. The world said you're going to be just like your dad. You're going to be just like your mom. You're going to be just like everybody else. The world tells you these things. They measure you up by the world standards. But God is saying, but did they measure your heart? Did they measure your heart? And this is why we say start with the heart. Because we believe it from it flows the course of our life. It's going to direct where we go. And I believe that God is tugging on hearts and minds right now to, be, to bring a shift in our heart and the way that we think, the way that we take care of this church, our house, our family, our personal family, the way that we begin to change things. How many people know that it starts with the heart? God says that he could take that heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And just like Bo, Bo's dad gave a word to him to change his life, his identity, today I give you the same word, but to tell you, your identity is not in anything in this world. Your identity is in Christ. This is why you say, I'm a man of God. This is why you say, I'm a woman of God. This is why you say, I'm a child of God. And children of God don't do this. Children of God don't say this. Children of God don't act like this. This is what a child of God does. This isn't what I do. This is who I am.